Hey, what's up YouTube, TJ Lawton here. And today I want to show you how to use the track delays inside of Ableton, what they are and why you might want to use them to get some extra swing and also to help with some mixing purposes as well. So what are the track delays in Ableton? So if you come down here to the bottom right and either view, there's a little D here. Uh, just make sure this is turned on and you get these little uh, brackets on the side here and you can change this number by milliseconds or you can change it by SMP which is like the sample rate or something I always do it by milliseconds though so the reason we want to use this is for two reasons there's a musical purpose of making it swung and, and making it sound more off the grid and stuff like that and the other reason is it's a, a mixing purpose where sometimes where two sounds will hit at the same time the transients will lay and it'll create a big spike in volume it's going to mess up hit going into compressors later like on the drum bus which we'll explain in a different video which i'll link at the top now so let's get into it then let's listen to this beat i'm working on real quick one of the first things i want to work on is sort of moving the clap to be earlier than the kick so the so the clap will happen first because right now what's happening is the kick and the clap are happening at the exact same time so if we zoom in it's happening like this now you might just come in here and just take off the grid and just move it like this but then you'd have to go do it for every single clip and that's going to take, a, take some time so i'm going to put that back what we're going to do instead i'm going to set up uh, a little snexoscope here I'm going to solo the kick and the clap together be able to see the kick and the snare in like a waveform and then we'll be able to start shifting the clap and you'll see what happens right now you can see because this is going to be for a groove purpose and also a mixing purpose but as you can see when the clap and the kick hit together there's an emphasis in volume so we can control that by moving the claps transient slightly before or after the kick depending on what you're trying to go for You can see it's happening now before the kick. It goes like whoosh, into the into the kick. Sounds kind of nice, um, but we can definitely dial that in better and make it sound much more groovy. So I'd argue that's probably too much. That sounds pretty good. I like it there at minus thirteen. Another little trick you can do is you can open up a calculator and you can do 60,000 divided by your BPM and BPM is 123. And you get this number here, which is the, uh, how long a beat is in your song or a quarter, a quarter, like a beat, a quarter bar or anything like that, uh, a pulse, um, as, um, as milliseconds. So if I wanted this clap to now happen a whole quarter before I can set it to minus 488. So we'll try that now. This will be extreme, but you'll see what I mean. The clap's basically now happening on one and three to the two and four. So let's see if I half this, it will now be in the offbeat. So this is a uh, minus 144. But let's say we wanted to use that mainly just to mathematically put it in a quantifiable position before the kick. So again, we're going to 6,000 by 123, which is our BPM. And we're going to divide this number by a large division of four, something like 128, which we get 3.8. But maybe we want to times two that. We get minus seven. Maybe we want to times two that as well, actually. And minus 15.24. So number before, I think we had minus 14, which sounded good. This will also sound good, probably. I haven't tried it out yet, but this will be mathematically perfect. Um, so let's see what it sounds like. Minus 15.24. Cool. There you go. I think that sounds pretty good. And, you know, if you're a bit OCD, you can say that mathematically perfect now. Uh, have a quick look at the Smexoscope see the claps happening like just before the kicks like that giving it a bit more groove and helping out with the mixing in my style of music house and techno sometimes is a bit where a lot of hi-hats layer up so if we look at the offbeat hi-hat here and my ride symbol 
Let's listen to just your hi hat quick. Now in the right symbol by itself. And then together, if I take the panning off as well, you'll hear these that clash quite a lot. They are in slightly different frequencies, like the ride is slightly higher, but you could definitely get more separation out of it. So the one the first thing we could do, I guess it's turning into a panning tutorial now, is just pan them slightly apart. So the offbeat could come like maybe just nine to the left and the right symbol will come like eight or nine to the right. That's already gonna give us a nice separation. And then we can do the same thing here where we apply some math, 923, and then we're gonna divide that by say 32. Actually, I'm gonna divide that by two and get this number instead. I think it'll be better. I'm gonna set this one to minus 7.62 and this one to 7.62. So the ride symbol is gonna be happening a bit late and the high and the high is gonna happen a bit early, but they're gonna separate not only by panning and by pitch, but also by time. So they're gonna have enough, it's gonna have a lot of separation that they're gonna have their own space, but it's gonna be so subtle you're not really gonna recognize it. You know what, I think that's probably too much. I'm going to half time that. We've got 3.81. So this would be minus 3.81. And this would be 3.81. Cool, let's do a before and after. So it's before. Very stiff. I think it's very stiff, very rigid. Put it back on. Very subtle difference, but you can see it's a bit more, bit more uh, off the grid. Sounds a bit nicer. Another little trick you can do is layering this with your sub and your kick, because as you know, when you side change stuff, you want the kick to move out of the way. Sorry, the bass to move out of the way of the kick. So what we can do is we can use time delay to sort of shift again, like do with the ride and the hi hat. We can actually shift the kick just a little bit earlier in the bass, quite a chunk later. So if you have notes that are happening on the very beginning, so for example, here I have notes happening where a kick will always land i kind of want uh, that to have a bit more space out the way so that that there's more separation and just helps a little bit with the mix so again we can apply some math here i'm going to take what's already here divided by two i don't want to shift the kick too much because it's really gonna change the whole texture of the song if i move it too much but actually you can move it just by a tiny bit and it's really nice for drops because the kick's going to come in just subtly a little bit earlier and it's going to really slap uh, the back of your head because it's going to feel like a bit like uh, it's caught up with you rather than it's happening when you expect it and it's like whoa it's kind of a jolt um, but you only want to do this very very subtly um, so we're just going to put this to like minus 1.9 and on the baseline you know times this by four and probably go for 7.62 Very salt, you can't really hear it, but let me um, let me take it off a sec, play it without it. Put it back on. Very subtle, but just sounds a bit more separated. It's gonna help with the mixing and the side chaining and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna go into the sample mode because honestly I never use it I don't really sure how it works but it's just another way of calculating how the shifting works I just prefer to do it in milliseconds because I can mathematically put it in place so that's my full in-depth track delay tutorial I hope you find it useful uh, please like and subscribe more videos coming every day cheers